We are marching to stop the destruction of Wood Key, and we are marching for the construction of civic offices to be constructed elsewhere. Hey guys, Christopher Norse Rain. Today's video is going to be another one in the Viking Ireland series. And I'm currently back home in Norway, but I was in Dublin last year for quite some time. And I still have some footage from that stay that I haven't yet shown you guys. So the video is about Wood Key. Wood Key is an area in Dublin. It's by the banks of the River Liffey, and it's about four acres big. Now, this area is also part of the old Viking settlement that was in Dublin. And during an excavation, they discovered that this, this site was basically the most significant site from the Viking Age outside of Scandinavia. Even though they knew this, they decided to basically bulldoze the whole site. In case you are new to the channel, I'm posting new Viking related content every Sunday about Viking history, Norse mythology, reporting on Viking news in the media, looking at Viking culture today, and also traveling to historical places from the Viking Age. If you enjoy that kind of content, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for the algorithm. All support is much appreciated. This is the story of Woodkey. After first starting to raid the Irish from 795, Vikings began settling in Dublin from 841 and onwards. The Vikings were driven out of Dublin by the Irish in 902 only to return and resettle a few years later in 914. Dublin would become the largest trade hub in the country and stayed under Viking rule till the Battle of Clontarf in 1014. During this period, Vikings had made a lasting impression on the country and gave birth to the Norse Gaels, also known as the Hiberno-Norse, people with mixed Norse and Gaelic ancestry and culture. Later, in 1169, Dublin was invaded again, this time by the Normans. After almost 200 years of Norse reign, it's no surprise that there would be a substantial number of archaeological finds from the Viking Age in Dublin. The soil conditions in this area are wet and beneficial for preservation. Fast forward about 900 years to 1950, and the Dublin Corporation is starting to buy up land at Wood Key with plans of new office development. And by 1967, they own the full plot, and the demolition order of the current buildings is put into action. After some initial exploration of the site in 1969, the main excavation of the site starts in 1973. The excavation is conducted by the National Museum of Ireland, led by the 25-year-old archaeologist Pat Wallace. It soon becomes evident that the site is extremely valuable from an archaeological point of view and it appears that the area has been densely populated. The excavation is under constant pressure with impossible deadlines from the Dublin Corporation, who are eager to build their new headquarters, and the excavation team is forced to work under floodlights after sunset to maximize the time that they have available. The Dublin Corporation are impatient and disrupts the excavation in 1973, for three months with bulldozers. It is clear that they want the excavation to end as soon as possible. It is a question of the democratic process. That, to me, is now the nerve center of the controversy. 
By 1976, the Woodkey controversy has become a well-known public matter, and the same year a protest group, the Friends of Medieval Dublin, is formed to campaign against the demolishment of the site. The fruits of the movement peak in 1978, with a 20,000-strong protest march under the banner Save Wood Key. We are marching to stop the destruction of Wood Key, and we are marching for the construction of civic offices to be constructed elsewhere. A huge victory in this battle is won in 78, when the court rules that the Wood Key site should be recognized as a national monument, which means that the site would be preserved and protected. Unfortunately, thanks to a loophole in the National Monuments Act of 1930, the Dublin Corporation manages to subvert the verdict and their development plans could continue as planned. In 1979, bulldozers disrupt the site again and remove unexcavated soil, which turns out to contain several valuable artifacts. The same year, a three-week-long sit-in operation on the site, titled Operation Citric, was held in order to halt the demolition work. Then, in 1981, after seven years of excavation, accompanied by court cases, demonstrations and occupations on the site, it was finally time to bulldoze the remaining site, together with any hope of further excavations. Over 200,000 artifacts were retrieved from the Wood Key site, which can be found today in the National Museum of Ireland. If the excavation had been given more time, we could have had even more. Part of the city wall that was demolished has been rearranged inside the new office building. Copies of archaeological finds have been placed on the sidewalk and a statue of a Viking ship prow is put up to commemorate the site's heritage. In my opinion, they are only reminders of what was lost. I keep thinking how amazing it would be if they made the whole area into an archaeological museum. This way, this area would be preserved for generations. It would be a one-of-a-kind historical attraction. Though, another thing to consider, it wasn't just one layer to excavate at the site, but 12 layers. So, the question becomes, what layer would you like to preserve? If the goal is to get all the archaeological data from the very birth of Dublin, then all layers must be excavated and ultimately removed. An archaeological curiosity you can find in this area is in this Lidl shop. Under a thick piece of glass, you can actually see the ruins of one of the old Viking houses. During a later archaeological excavation in 2020, they discovered another part of the old Viking settlement, which showed that the borders of the Viking settlement were twice the size than first estimated. I was in Dublin at the time and managed to get a few shots of the dig. One interesting find they made at this site was the remains of a child. The child had been wrapped in a shawl and appeared to have died a violent death before being tossed into the puddle. And that is the story of Wood Key. Quite the sad story, to be honest. And what gets to me is the fact that it wasn't a privately owned, greedy company that was pushing this through. It was the Dublin Corporation, which is the city government in Dublin. And that just shows to tell that you shouldn't always trust the authorities. On a brighter note, though, there is another really um, potential-looking site in 
Ireland. It's close to Waterford. Uh, they have found a site there that they believe will also be quite significant. I don't think it's going to be as significant as Wood Key, though, but still it's outside of the city center, so it's going to be a lot more easier to excavate that area compared to Wood Key. So looking forward to see what happens there. Wrapping it up there. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Uh -huh.